Hi everyone, you're welcome back on Nikki's Thoughts. Um, today we have a guest in our midst, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Um, but just to put a little bit of light on what we're doing, um, we started a parenting series and we had a first um, series done already. And so this is the second series. So our guest today for parenting is right here. Um, a beautiful uh, a YouTube um, uh, a person as well you know as she has a she will introduce herself and a YouTube channel which will be put in the be able to see the, the YouTube channel here so uh, let's let's allow her to introduce herself thank you very much for this opportunity hello everybody my name is Shim Obishesa I'm a mother of five I'm a YouTuber, I'm an entrepreneur, and I do a lot of things. I work with youth, I'm a youth coordinator, and you know, that's just a bit about me. I'm a wife, and uh, I'm really more into the youth, you know, and I have a YouTube channel where I discuss um, empowering information for youth, for young adults, and also for parents as well. So thank you for having me. Thanks for honoring our invitation yeah. here. Um, Ike, would you tell us your YouTube channel? Oh yes. Um, the name of my YouTube channel is Shim Obishes on Youth Zone, and then um, also you can connect with me on my Instagram, and it's the same name, and also on Facebook, it's Shim Obishes on Youth Zone. Thank you. Thank, thank you once you. again. And so you can head up to our um, head of our channel on Shimu session. Actually, this is a collaboration. So we had um, a section about youth as she just introduced herself that mm -hmm. she is uh, about youth empowerment. Uh, so and um, so we had the session there already um, about youth, you know, questioning, yes. asking some questions there. I think mm -hmm. it's how do you see the the interview about the youth? Oh my goodness, it was so nice. It was um, information packed. There was no, like, there's not enough time to discuss what everything entails. So I think we should have another one where we can talk proper on them, a particular topic from the interview. It was power filled. You need to see it. Yeah, I would, I would ask us to actually go to the actual channel to watch that video. But like being said, today, um, that mother do i'm going to just ask her question she just introduced herself as a mother of five so and you can see that she has um she would had an experience um, in that field mm -hmm. so um once again welcome thank and you. thank you for honoring an invitation so i'm just going to ask you a question about pre parenting pre mother before you become a a, um, a mother yourself mm -hmm. What is your expectation as a pre-parent? What are what were your, what are your expectation before you become a mother? Um, mother? My expectation were like things will be smooth, and um, you know, if I tell my child do this, that's what they're gonna do. There will be no argument. There will be no why should I do that. There will be no I don't want to do that. So I was thinking, oh, it will be so smooth. Of course, when I was growing up um, back home in Nigeria, it's a different thing entirely. Like even people who are as old as your parents or people who are your older siblings can put you right, can tell you to do some things. So it's not necessarily like it has to be your parent. So I didn't know that would be a bit of a, you know, challenge, you know, but experience as well okay. in parenting now. Yeah. So, um like the being the parents you know so we don't have an expectation like you mentioned mm -hmm. pre the whole when i have my child i'm going to do this i'm mm -hmm. going to be that to that child my child is going to be this my dad is going to be chai yeah. and that that yeah. so i'm looking back mm -hmm. to your pre um pre parents as you a parent do you think you um that dream did were, were you able to do you think you near to the dream or you 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 achieve the dream um i believe that, that everybody have a dream and whatever part you are on you have to dream of 
what you want the situation to look like. But I believe there's a personal will and there's God's will. So even when I was growing up, I was thinking, oh, I have to um, study, I have to become a doctor or something before I get married and have kids. And it didn't happen like that. So it, it taught me that there are some expectations of mine that I might be expecting from my children that's not really like what is going on. So that's an understanding that sometimes what you look forward to might not happen in the same way that you're expecting it. Okay. Thank you. So, and then again, thank you for that. Um, would you be able to give us the age range you say you have five children? Yes. Children? Yes, I do. My first child is a girl. She's 19. She just turned 19. And my second daughter, she's 16. And my first son, that's my third child, is 14. And I have um, my fourth son, my fourth child, my second son, is three it will be four in october and my baby she's two so those are the ages of my children so we can say that she's hands she has a hand full yeah, hands and full. the water is still in the hand her son is still in her hand is still on water yes you know and then she she had variety of what we're looking for so she has toddler and then she have youth mm -hmm. and so um yeah so and um, parenting these children um, what would you say your, um, uh, your experience so far? Mm. Yeah. And then before I ask that question, mm. where do you have them? Oh, they were all born in Ireland. Um, the three, the first three were born in Dublin and the last two babies were born in Galway. Okay. Would you just share your experience with them? So far? Okay. Like when my first daughter was born in Dublin, she was premature. So, and that was um, my experience, my first time experience. I think her coming as a premature baby, the process of her staying in the hospital, the toughness of how the experience went kind of prepared me more into parenting because it was tough at first. So the next stage, you know, the next child seems a bit easy. So, and I was by myself, like, I'm the, I don't have any uh, siblings in Ireland, although I have my husband, but it was a bit lonely to parent alone in, a, in another man's land. So, and then I had my second child. It was a bit easier then because I already have one and I was like almost three years in gap between my first and my second. So, and then on and on I went, I have another one, my third child. And I thought, oh, I think I'm done this time. Then, 20, 2018, I have another one. That was my fourth child. What's the gap between the, um, the third and the fourth? My, my third child, that's my first son. And my second son, there's about 11 years between them. Between them. Oh, wow. So it was a bit of a struggle when I had my second son. Because getting back into that emotional state was hard on my body mm. yeah it was but they're growing now so was there any post uh, postpartum experience um yeah with my second son that's my fourth child when i had him thank god there were information available during my antenatal care about the signs to look out for if you're ever in a situation where having after you know after the baby is born like um, depression or something like that i experienced a bit of it and i think that i could be wrong but in a, on a personal level the gap between the two boys kind of triggered something in my body and also that time we moved we like i gave back to my son on the tent from, I moved from a different address to the hospital. So when they discharged me the next day, I moved to another house. So I felt so lonely. And um, I noticed that I usually cry over little things. I, even though I want to talk to somebody, I speak from within without opening my mouth. So if that person doesn't respond, I get upset. And I'm not the kind of the person that usually cry every time. So I went through that phase, but thankfully, I have my husband and my older sister around me to kind of 
helped me through that journey. So that was my experience. So, and uh, would you say it's because of the gap that caused that? Um, I would person? say to me, it's, it's the gap. It might yeah. not happen to somebody else that mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. and the move as well. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on at that time. Maybe that was what affected my emotions in a way. Yeah, thank you so much for mm -hmm. answering that question. Mm -hmm. So what would you say your strengths as a mother and your weakness as a mother? Mm. How would you describe your strengths and your weakness? Yeah, um, I would describe my strength as, you know, because we are all still discovering ourselves. You know, parenting is not just something you know 100%. You, you continue to discover who you are and then who you're raising. So as a, as a mother, like, I listen. It took me a while, you know, to, to get to that stage to listen. And sometimes when you see me and my kids, if you don't know they are my children, you might not know I'm their mom, the way we relate. We share items like clothing and all. They wear my stuff. If it fits, you can wear it. So that's my strength. I'm relatable. You know, I come down to their level and they can come to me with anything whatsoever. Even without their dad knowing anything, they can they share a lot of things with me. Um, a weakness, I wouldn't say it's a weakness, but depends on how, you know, whatever the situation is. Sometimes I give them the chance to be who they are, like who they want to be. You have a freedom to be who you want to be. I don't force. I won't impose something on you. But I will just say, oh, this is how it's going to be. This is what will happen if you do this. And if you end up doing that and realizing your mistake, then you come back. But it depends on the situation. Sometimes that might not work, which might make it a weakness. But sometimes it gives the child the opportunity to explore and understand who they are and, you know, how responsible they are making decisions for themselves. Thank you for that. So mm. that's good as well. Mm. So um, given the liberty. Yes. Um, to be who they are. Yeah. It can be, it can have some weakness. Part yeah. Of it, and mm -hmm. that's where the, or negative type of part of it. And again, um, what is your fear as a parent? Hmm. Okay, there was a time we were talking in the house, and I always say, um, if you want to get a job, if you want to get married, don't laugh now. I want you to be around me. <laughs> I want you to be in Ireland to do all that. Because you hear them say, oh, maybe I will go to Canada, maybe I will live in America. And one day, my second daughter, the one with the big mouth, says, but you left your mom. Mm -hmm. You left your mom to come here. And I'm like, well, it's better here than where my mom is. So that has always been my fear that if we get to a stage, I will be by myself. And then I will murder them from afar. And they will not be as close to me as they used to now, even though sometimes I still complain that they are making noise. But I still want them to be as close to me as possible. But we get there. When we get there, we have to get used to it. Yeah, I'm at that stage now. Yeah, I mean, they sit now because um, my children they are all grown, and so as large as this house is, I'm the only one yeah. swimming in the house. We just, you know, the parents are the one there. So, um, having said that, um, parenting back in Africa and be parenting here, what's the difference between what's the difference and the same similarities? We have to. Talking okay. about the parenting style, how you were parented, yeah, how your parents parent you, okay, and your own parenting style. Now, what are the similarity and the, and the, um, and the difference there, and which one of them you prefer? Mm. Oh dear, um, parenting back home, the experience I had at home with the way my parents are to me. Um, the feelings is from my side. I wouldn't know how my parent, how my children are feeling towards you know my parenting, but sometimes they say it because I ask questions like, "What kind of mother do you think I am?" Say something that you don't like. Sometimes we have an open day. Say something you don't like that I do, but with respect, and then we will work on it. Like back home, I was a sick child. 
So I get away with a lot of things because I was skinny. I wasn't talking on time. And my, especially my dad, they were present parents. I know what they look like. I, I see them every day. But the emotional aspect of parenting wasn't really there. And that's very common mm. with my background where somebody might say that's not my case but that's my own case you know the affection i remember your last guest was saying the i love you part like mm -hmm. you don't get there i didn't get that oh i love you part that was a there was a time like i bought my dad a, a birthday present he asked me how much i paid for it he gave me the money back like mm -hmm. you know exchange of gift wasn't really something is you know, it welcome easily, but I keep pushing it even back home. I wasn't even in Ireland then. So the emotional part wasn't really there. Even though you know they love you, but you want to see it and you want them to say it. And now because of that, my second son doesn't really like a lot of hugs. So what I notice is when I hold him, he wants to, he want to yeah. go. But anytime he wants to hold me, I leave everything I'm doing and I hold him. And the I love you, oh, like my first son, if you want to hug him, if you want to give him a kiss, he run away, but I still kind of, you know, when they want it, they come to me. The emotion is there. I'm present as well as my parents were present. But I show more affection with my parenting because I didn't really get that. You get a lot of affection when you're sick back home. But here, it's good to kind of express your feelings, how that person make you feel, rather than just do right. You should say right as well. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you. So, I, I, another question. Do you think it's stressful to raise, um, raise um, children abroad than home? Or um, what would your take on that? Um, I think it's a kind of a 50-50 but leaning towards here more. Back home, you will have lots of people helping you out. I remember the culture then will be, oh, if you have a child, like normally from Yoruba side, eight days, you give a name to that child, and then you nurture that child, like you bond with that child for about, is it 41 days? You don't go out for 41 days. People will come into your house, take care of you, you know, give you your bath and the child and take care of everything around you back home. But here, <laughs> you don't even have no. that. Oh, why do? Some people even, you know, when they feel, oh, I think I have to have the baby, they drive themselves down to the hospital and you're just by yourself because everybody is busy. That part, you, I feel like from back home is much more better. But based on the environment and the medical care of mother, child, hospital, and stuff like that, here is much better. Because they look after you, regardless of where you're from. Nobody will ask you to pay any money, and they will take care of you. Money will be sorted after they focus more on your health. So that's the, you get more help at home, but you get a little bit comfortable, but you do it on your own, in a way. Okay. So there's a, a pro and cons yeah, to this really. kind of thing, you know. Um, yeah, I remember when I was younger, um, because I grew up in the church, mm. and I was very lazy. Mm. You know, I can't carry a child for two minutes, mm. one second, when I was growing up. So I've always thinking that if I'm having children, I'm going to have him back in Africa. And all I want to do is to give the child when they want to take breasts, bring that child to me, yeah. take breasts <laughs> and take that child away. 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 And then, but I end up finding myself here, mm. raising the children all by myself and by myself, all by myself alone for, uh, to the glory of God, four of them. Mm. So there's a poor and to this, like mm -hmm. you just mentioned. You see mm -hmm. people around you. And then here you are, um, you are, you are, you have the benefits of, of free medication. Mm -hmm. It might not be free medication, but of course, you can be looked after. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or if you have um operation, maybe you have CS, having child, and you come back home, it's only you and your your 
your partner that is going to look after you or you like back home yeah. when you see uh, a lot of people looking at her especially when you have cs like ah she has cs and then because of that your parents will be there your parents in law mm -hmm. will be there mm -hmm. your grandma you have aunties and mm -hmm. everybody around you and then you might have living help as well yes like that will be looking after you you know mm -hmm. will be careful i actually crave for that particular i miss that part too. yes i do miss that part as a parent but um but um do you think you miss that yeah, yeah. of course mm -hmm. we want to lie down yeah. for 41 days and we'll exactly. them food. <laughs> so that, that, that aspect but yeah. like you said um yes so we have different styles everywhere um like we learn from from her and so far, if you want to change anything in your parenting style, what would that be? Mm, change anything. Um, I was, we learn every day. Yes, day. we do. And then because we grow every day as well. Because mm. sometimes you don't even fully understand yourself. And then you're nurturing other people. Like me mm. with five five different individuals. Yes, exactly. That's different individuals. Mm -hmm. So sometimes... I cannot stick to one style. Mm. Even one style doesn't work for one child mm. all the time. Mm. So I think I would love to have been more patient from the beginning, but I'm getting there, like listen more. And um, I don't know, like just listen and understand the child and not to be expectant of anything. Like, let them just be themselves. Don't expect this child is going to be like this or this child should do this. Let the child express themselves. And also not to take some things personal. Like, if your parents, especially the teenage years, you know, back home, if your dad asks you, um, do this, you don't say why. You can't say why. But here, you hear, it's like, why should I? But, and it's not an insult. They're just saying, why do you want me to do that? You know, just not to take it too personal. But I'm learning. And I'm, even though some, some people might think, oh, she have a 19-year-old, she know better. Yeah. Because uh -uh. yeah. they grow every day. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for for your honest and from being open to mm -hmm. us and sharing all your experiences with us. Um, I think one, maybe one or two more questions and then we're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, at the question... What is your um, take about making choice for the children in the future concerning their future? What mm -hmm. yeah, so and um, what's your take about that? Do mm -hmm. you uh, as choosing a career, um, field they want to go, even settling down maritally? What's your take? Do you um, you make choice for them or you what's your take on that? Do you understand mm -hmm. my question? Yeah. I think there is a Yoruba proverb that, sh that says, he that wears the shoes know where he pinches. You can help, you can guide. That's what parenting is all about. But when it comes to choices, especially when it comes to career, you notice as a parent, you see the quality of that child anyway. Maybe the child is used to, is you know, have their strength, have their gift in this area. You can guide them to say, oh, you do this better. You do this better. And that will help that child to know what kind of course to go for. And it is their life. So you just guide them through and let them choose what they feel at peace with. Because it's their peace and not yours. Mm -hmm. And when they have peace, that equally will give you rest of mind. Mm -hmm. So it's just guidance and let them, you know, make their own choices. Yeah. If I have to go by the way of the Bible, it says there that in the book of Jeremiah, that even before God put Jeremiah inside her mother, is the is his mother rather is being predestined yes. to be this. So every child carries something. Yes. And it's only God that knows um what that child is going to be. Yeah. And in African setting where we come from, every parent wants their child to be either doctor or lawyer, lawyer or engineer or not or so not <laughs> so what's your take about that um we well, just we just basically answer the question education is very it. important mm -hmm. but you see some people they are so gifted with their hands and that's what is making them millions some people sew clothes and that's their main 
source of income and they make money from that. You, you know, back then, even people who are acting, people who play football, some parents will be like, you want to be useless. Why are you doing that? You know, they don't want their children to do all that. Because like you mentioned, a lawyer or a doctor, engineer or nothing. Then if you're something other than those, then it's like you're a failure. But that's not the case anymore. Like the world is changing. Like IT, everybody have to have a little bit of computer I have, now. I have a child that has a mom when they eventually has the parents and they have to be a doctor. And then the, the child asks the parent, the mom, that, mm -hmm. why, why are you not a doctor yourself? <laughs> why are you not a doctor yourself? You know, and yes, just to find out your whole music yeah. about, yeah. this is about you, not about mm -hmm. me now. Because my own is studying your child know what that guy diet type is when you notice that your child has a particular gift develop it yes and then if they in the future to decide to go on that fit that's okay when my children they were um i have two that is working at the moment but i know that they have music trained i mean they are mm -hmm. they are more inclined to music mm -hmm. so yeah. when they were younger i make extra curricular to Put them into music classes, help them a lot in that particular area. Yeah. One is in teaching in secondary school now, and is mm. teaching um, music in secondary school, and then other subjects as in English or uh, religion is teaching. And the the other one is fully into a music career. So they all go to third level school because I just told them that if you want to do this, do it, mm -hmm. and and then do it to your own best interest. Yes. Like, do it this is who you are you want to do music go ahead and explore and yeah. do it you know as big yeah. and whatever that you mm -hmm. want to be done mm -hmm. it's just to support them but it's not about me it's all about you mm -hmm. so i'm glad to hear that you're saying that mm -hmm. and um we just round up the session we can always bring uh um uh, 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 guests back here to talk to us again um, at all time, if you have any question, mm -hmm. um, a comment you want to make, and everything. Um, but before we go, um, is there any advice you want to give to potential parents or somebody that is parenting at the moment mm -hmm. and thinking that oh, I'm not doing the right thing, or you know, or struggling or going through some challenges as a parent? What would you say to them? Um, I heard somebody say one time that. Um, everybody have a purpose for their creation when that purpose is due like that is when the child will be conceived there is no child that is born by mistake and god that gives children knows the right parent for that child because any child doesn't have the ability to choose who their parent will be so if you're a parent take things easy take things easy and um, parenting is about you becoming as well, also as the child. You grow every day. Listen to your children. Don't ever be too busy to listen. Like if a child is craving for your attention, don't say, no, hold on one minute, I'll get... Drop everything you're doing and, you know, listen to that child. And relax. This, everything is going to be fine. And sometimes parents, we try to avoid mistakes through our children. They're going to make mistakes anyway. So let them be who they want to be. You just guide and teach them and, you know, they, they, will, they will be fine. They will be okay. fine. Thank you. So um, I caught my children talking one day. Um, they, were they were gossiping. I will say <laughs> that they're gossiping about me and their dad. And then they're like, oh, mommy, daddy is so harsh. Mommy is so tough. Mm -hmm. And they were given the reason why daddy is harsh, why mommy is tough. Mm -hmm. Give one word that your children will use. If they have to just one word to describe you, what would they say about you? Um, my second order say I'm overprotective. I'm overprotective. Maybe because, uh, I don't know, whatever. You know, they say, where are you going? Like, I have to know where you are. Like, me saying if you're going to dublin that's where you should go if you say dublin is where you're going that's where you should go don't say you are going here and end up 
you can as well make a call to say i'm leaving this place but i really want to go to this side so just in case of anything happens imagine if somebody say i'm going to paris and then they go to you know us and there's a, a news a, like a, a plane crash or something you'll be rolling down on the floor to say he's in that plane or she is in that plane mm -hmm. but they are somewhere else but if you have called to say, oh, I'm no longer going there, I'm going this way, they'll be like, oh, it's not even there. My second daughter say I'm overprotective. Anyway, but um, my first daughter sometimes say, what is that say? Too much information. What is that? T something? Too much information. T M I or something like that. Because I talk, when I'm advising that, she said T M I. That's too much information okay. or something like that. She just wants to hear a little and that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, um, okay, that, that's, that's actually um, a, a nice, well informative meeting tonight. Um, I think we all, we all agree that you've done so well this, mm -hmm. this evening, yep. this interview. As we just give our guests a, a applauding, a clap. Clap offing. Yes. <laughs> Give him a clap. He gave her a clap offing. She you. actually did well. And I want to believe that we learn one or two things from her talking here. First, that she, I know somebody will be there to say, oh, I'm not alone. Mm. Okay, in this particular area. Mm. And this is what just is just all is all about. And just to learn from ourselves and, and, and our appearances, right? Um, and to know one or two things about ourselves. There's one question I want to ask you, but you just answered because daughter says you're over, overprotective. Mm. These our children, especially most of us that in diaspora, our children always refer to us as African parents, mm. you know, and they say one or two things about our parenting style. They talk about culture. You can go to our channel to mm. check about culture when she was asked when i was being interviewed mm -hmm. about culture we talked about that as well you know we have a culture in place as well mm -hmm. but anyway we've learned one or two things yeah. um from from uh, this is just let us know that we're not alone mm -hmm. our first um guest mentioned something about emotional that our parents they don't uh they don't show affection they, you know and she mentioned the same thing and then she that she said what she always uh, do is to make sure that her children have a relationship with her and then they, they she always said them i love you mm -hmm. and everything and she always you know because that was missing in her own how she was parented and then we can see the same traits from uh uh, uh, uh guess now saying the same thing about emotion that she tries she try as much as possible to bring that emotion to her children to show them affection mm -hmm. um so that's something that we can actually um learn you know and um, mm -hmm. put into our kids and then we should not we should not have the um that all oh, my parents trained me this way i have to be i have to train my children that way mm -hmm. i think i'm going to give you my own example one day or my own personal experience on that um when when maybe one of these days but because of the timing i'm not going to go into that mm -hmm. but um yes i had my own experience at times the way we were patterned as a parent patterned us we transferred it to our children mm -hmm. unknowing to us mm -hmm. unknowing to us or, or not being conversant that they were not in the same yeah. wavelength, they're not in the same environment, yeah. they're not in the same culture. Mm -hmm. And then we try to bring our own culture, the pattern, mm -hmm. you know, but they can have some implications mm -hmm. if care is not taken on us or the way we we parent the children. But in other words, I just want to encourage that we're doing a fantastic work. Mm -hmm. And then the one of things, let us learn from, from her. You can see that we both have weakness and we have strengths mm -hmm. and then parenting is a lifestyle until we die we yeah. just keep parenting i remember my mom parented me until she left now i'm looking for her to come and parent me the more mm. but she's already gone yeah. so parenting is something that goes on until the rest of the so and that's our ministry and we have to give ourselves a pat at the back yeah for being a wonderful parents yeah. and embrace that you're mm -hmm. doing a little 
learn from your mistake and get up mm -hmm. you know we all still learning i'm still learning i have I have some things that if I have to change, I'll change. Yeah. And that's what I want people to be hopeful in. So let's just encourage ourselves that mm -hmm. we're in this boat together. We're in this boat together. I have my own prenotion as well. That if I have my children, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Based on the way I was being parented, I yeah. love my mom to beat. But there was some kind of parenting that I said, no, I'm not going to transfer that to my children. I find myself doing a little bit of that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even when I start parenting them. And, and I, I have some some that I was intentional about that, no, I'm not going to bring this yeah. to my parenting style, you know. So we learn from yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. Embrace that. Do not um, learn to say sorry. Yes. I think, do you do sorry? Um, I do sorry. Yeah. Well, I do. It takes, mm -hmm. like some people can, I'm your parents. I'm your parent. I have no notion when I was growing up that parents do wrong, but they don't admit they are wrong when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. But there was nothing wrong in us saying sorry. Yeah. Because it's part of training. Yes. Saying sorry when it's necessary. Because mm -hmm. I'm your parent. I'm your parent. We are patterned. The children, we want to be patterned as well. So, on that note, I want to put, I, we can go on, 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 yes. because it's an interesting topic yeah. and everything, but we need to put this stuff to hit now and to say thank you to our guests and then to say thank you to our viewers. Please, if you are not subscribed, subscribe on this channel, make it start. Please head on to our channel, share of this session. I will put the link here and for us to go um, onto that channel, I'll put our name. Mm -hmm. uh in there as well and go on nikki's thoughts on instagram and you know and again on facebook and then and she also have a facebook and instagram, instagram on the same mm -hmm. name so please go and support us go to our channel and watch the version about youth that we did together mm -hmm. as a parenting as well mm -hmm. and then comments ask questions let's be hopeful and learn from from ourselves and and then and then this is another way for potential parents mothers or father to be to learn from all this we've been talking um until then i want to ask a question but the time is gone and the question mm -hmm. is but well, she already mentioned that the husband is been there mm -hmm. the husband is involved yes in the parenting mm -hmm. all along he yeah. wasn't done alone or well, even if the parents if you single parents is a single daddy or single mom you're doing a fantastic yes. job just yeah. Embrace it and then all oh, shall be well. Yeah. And until then, we want to say thank you and God bless you. Yeah. On to our next video, what do you want to say to our guests? Um, yeah, I say take care of yourself. How you... to our subscriber, yeah. yeah. So, take care of yourself. You can not take care of people if you are not well yourself. So, take care of yourself, especially your mental health. Say, when you need help, ask for help. Asking for help doesn't mean you're weak. It just means you need an extra hand. And um, don't ever compare your children. Don't even compare your own children. Don't compare your children to other people's children. Yeah. Just one step at a time and you'll be just fine. Yeah. And again, can I just say something to us there? You know, and parenting is a self-led part. That is it. But once in a while, like to be, to be turned into it, it's selfish. For mm -hmm. yourself to gain your head at the back and to be strength to be mother. If you just work and work and not selfish for just minutes, you cannot break down. So you won't be useful for yourself and you're not going to be useful for the children. So once in a while, be selfish to gain your energy, to gain your strength, and then to be able to deliver. Yes. Until we see ourselves, want to say thank you bye. and bye.